we're talking about organizations that are medium to large organizations who could really benefit from this. People like ask me this question all the time. Eric, can I do contracts if I'm an overseas company? All right, live stream from Paris, your boy Eric Coffey here. And the reason why we're making this video today, I want to talk about something that's happening that pertains to international contracts. A lot of people may not know. However, just recently, and again, this is as of April the 26th, 2022, uh, ruling by the Department of Defense says now 8A companies can start to sole source work internationally. So here's the rules and regulations and what it says about them in terms of now 8A companies can start to receive sole source contracts internationally. So here is a summary. DOD, GSA, and NASA are issuing a final rule amending the FAR to support the SBA's policy of including overseas contracts in their agency small business contracting goals. Wow, that's incredible. And so again, with me being here, uh, that makes sense to discuss today. And why is that important? Well, a couple things. One is, uh, first and foremost, people get asked me this question all the time. Eric, can I do contracts if I'm an overseas company? Duh. The answer is yes. Uh, because why? What happens is when we come over here to these countries like France, we got to hire local people to help us facilitate the contract action. So not just hiring them, they're the people, the actual bodies, but we hire companies and corporations to help us as well, right? Because some of you out there who are now in an 8A program who probably are from countries over here in Europe or in Africa or you know you're going to be looking at now these opportunities given the new ruling that has been changed or just been modified just a few weeks prior to the recording of this particular episode so you're going to be looking at those type of opportunities but also for those folks who uh, service uh, these particular agencies you're going to be saying to yourself how do I get a piece of that pie like how do I participate in these opportunities so for for both reasons uh, this video makes a lot of sense for those people because why you're going to be wanting to find out how do you get a piece of the pie or if you're overseas you're trying to figure out like Eric, so how, how does this help me how do I get involved so let's talk about that today how do how do we get involved in working internationally in international contracts like us being here in France uh, and more importantly how do we get involved in this particular opportunity that was just put out recently this rule so you want to look this up it's called federal acquisition regulation applicability of small business regulation outside the United States so I think this is really cool uh, so let's get into it first thing I want to discuss is who really stands to benefit from this rule right because when you hear rules all the time like ah, yeah it sounds good Eric but who really stands to benefit from this rule well I can tell you this most of the companies that are going to be able to take advantage of this uh, if you look at the size of projects that are overseas right the 8a particular program contract size for sole source that it caps off at four million four and a half million and yes we understand there's some clause that take it up even higher but for the most part general rule of thumb is four and a half million dollars for sole source well if we're looking at international contracts outside of things in like say a Puerto Rico per se because I'm now I don't consider Puerto Rico international because it's still part of the United States uh, when we talk about international for me I'm saying things again I'm over here in Europe if you have to do a project in Europe and I was giving this example this morning to Maria if I got to do a project in Europe and the same million dollar project for renovation I've got to do it here in Paris well that particular project the cost if I've got to do buy, buy American if I have to import some of my goods because they don't sell them here locally uh, if I have to use uh, local workforce which I don't know what I'm going to reach for what if I've got to provide security in some of these places because uh, you're accessing government facilities so you've got to hire local security uh, if I've got to import or bring over some of my superintendents or leadership I've got to house them I've got to put per diem in place I've got to put all that in place so, so you can easily see how a million dollar contract in the United States would could easily double if not triple in price overseas and so what happens what does that mean that means that the likelihood of the contract that we're discussing falling below the four million dollar threshold is highly unlikely and again, this is all hypothetical. This is just Eric speaking, right? This is not the SBA. This is not the government. This is Eric speaking to you. Uh, 
so hypothetically, the uh, the contracts are likely to be over that four million dollar threshold, right? Think about like Blackwater and security services and most of the, the uh, veterans who are listening to me, if you've served overseas and you worked on any type of contract, most of you are making 100 plus thousand dollars. And I had buddies of mine making that much money 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to go overseas. So if you think about that and you multiply that times a few people, you can see how the costs quickly swell or balloon way past the $4 million sole source threshold. So that got me to thinking, who is this rule really for? And so again, uh, I say that, let me get out the way so you guys can see the Eiffel Tower behind me. And it's crazy because it almost looks fake. It's right there. Um, and so it almost looks fake in this picture, right? I'm going to move around so you guys, you see the cars moving? It's not fake. See the trees moving? Uh, it's just got me in focus and it's got the tower not in focus. But nevertheless, when we, when we, when we start to add up the math, do the math and add up the numbers, we realize that this particular ruling is going to impact the larger companies, the larger entities, right? And so when I say impact them, I mean they're going to be the ones to be the beneficiaries of this rule. Now, if you disagree with me, that's fine. Leave it in the comments. Let me know if you disagree with me uh, because I'd be curious to hear. If you've ever had an international contract, I'd, be love, I'd love to talk about it. Uh, I do know I've had my podcast guest, Roberta Moore. She's had international contracts. Uh, and I do know we've had a couple other podcast guests who had international contracts. Um, but when we start to look at that, we say to ourselves, okay, um, now we're talking about organizations that are medium to large organizations who can really benefit from this. But then if we go back and we're speaking about 8A, you've got to be small business to be 8A. So then we start to like, okay, well, if we're talking about sole source and international contracts and they exceed the $4 million threshold, and we're discussing uh, 8A contracts. You can't be a large business, but you got to have large business revenues. Well, that kind of puts it in a box for a certain group or uh, entities that have the disposition, who have check off all the boxes in order to be able to do that. And, and yes, by the way, if you just saw my uh, laptop on the screen, yes, I'm holding my laptop in my hand as I'm doing it so I can get a good shot behind me. And I want to go back, but every time I go back, it seems like it cuts off. So let me see, because this is actually a nice review. And there it goes, it cuts off. So I'll come back in the screen. There it is. That's why I don't do it. So now we're talking about entities that are small businesses that can do 8A sole source above $4 million, uh, that have large business type revenues and large business bonding. Hmm, who does that leave us with? Exactly. And so we, we realize that this rule is going to serve entities that are tribally owned, Native American, Alaskan, Hawaiian Native. Uh, those type of organizations are going to be the, the true beneficiaries of this ruling. And as we know, I love these organizations because oftentimes they're looking to work with small businesses like us. Um, and again, if you're in any of my programs, you already know that we work with such such entities. In fact, I work with about three or four of them myself personally. Uh, we work with those entities to help us support building our businesses and to help them support their goals and support the mission, as, as which is obviously the most important part. So when we're looking at all these things, um, for me, uh, I want people to consider, right, that if you are a foreign national, if you are someone that is uh, in a country uh, where you see government contract opportunities, uh, this particular ruling that just took place uh, may impact you. Uh, if you are sitting by and you're watching me and you're in Italy, uh, you're in Australia, you're in um, you know, Puerto Rico, not Puerto Rico, I always say Puerto Rico because it comes to my brain, but if you're in a country that's not part of the United States, uh, that does not have, they're not banned from doing business with us, it may behoove you to take a look at this and see how do you jump into this marketplace because what's happening, as we already know, with the economy, the way it's changing, with all the money being printed, with stock markets going down, cryptos going down, people have to find other ways to make income. And I think that by partnering with an entity 
who can support this particular contract, uh, you're going to be stronger. So, for example, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, I personally, if I was from Africa, let's say, and I'm in Ghana, and I saw the U.S. was working in Ghana, I would try to find out how do I uh, introduce companies who uh, have the potential to work in Ghana to contracts in Ghana, bringing them, the teams, the people, the boots on the ground resources, and then telling them about this particular rule so that they can be the ones to really help facilitate winning the contract awards while you and your team and your group that you put together, your cohort, actually does the work. As I was explaining to someone this morning at breakfast, most uh, people, entities, they're looking for operators. We as small business, we're the operators, right? Because we're in an operator phase. That's how we build our business. That's how we grow our revenues. That's how we win for our families and our friends and the people who want to surround ourselves. Uh, the, these other entities are now at the stage where they're really uh, putting the deals together, finessing the relationships, uh, making sure that the organizational strategy, all that stuff is being handled at the highest levels, helping the government check off their boxes. Uh, and then we are the operators down that are actually the manual ones doing the work, doing the labor, implementing it, and executing on the delivery. So that's great because strategically, um, for you, the person in Ghana, uh, that gives you an avenue or outlet to reach out to these types of companies to say, hey, I have something of benefit of value to you that I can offer. And then for them, uh, they have a partnership with a relationship or a strategic relationship in a, a, one of these countries or entities that have boots on the ground, that's got eyes that can be their eyes and their ears for making sure or ensuring that these contracts get done by the book, uh, as per code, as per spec, as per regulation. Uh, and on time and on budget. So I, I really do see this as a win-win-win, uh, like the government likes to say. And for those persons that are international that are saying, Eric, I, you know, because um, I, I get this question all the time. Eric, I'm international. Tell me how to take advantage of it. it really, it's, it's, it looks as though uh, some of the same things that we're already teaching now in our current courses, uh, they're going to apply internationally because with this new ruling in the 8A, being able to allocate contracts, uh, sole source contracts, more importantly, sole source contracts overseas, that's going to really change the game for a lot of folks out there. So again, just something to look at, something to whet your appetite. As I'm here sharing, um, I wanted to have something of value to offer to give people some, just again, if I keep those wheels turning, if I keep that brain thinking, uh, then you are going to be able to, to finally like, okay, I figured out like some of the pieces of the puzzle, right? You're going to be able to start put some of these pieces of this jigsaw puzzle together and hopefully uh, you can find the final pieces in one of our programs or through one of our coaches or through, through one of my videos that will help you connect the dots and make it happen. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like. Leave me your comments. If you haven't signed up for any of our programs, visit govconedu.com to take a look at our programs, our books, everything that we offer on our sites, govconedu.com. On our resource page, we're hoping to help those companies, those people, those persons that really want to get into this to make a difference and to make a change. So thank you very much. As always, ciao. We'll see you next time.